Hello, I'm Matthew Oakley, welcome back. And today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the Optex BXS or BX Shield external curtain detector. I'm gonna take you through the sensors, features, and then we'll be head outside with Barry Clark and we'll take a look at installing one with you. To start, the BXS, as I said, is a curtain detector, 24 meters in total. That's 12 meters to the right, 12 meters to the left, which are adjustable depending on the area which you are protecting. Available in wireless and wired, the BXS can learn onto any control panel. Allow the BXS to be part of your security setup and reduce your nuisance alarms. With built-in sensing analytics, the sensor can recognize what has been detected and is able to distinguish between genuine intrusions and things that might normally create a nuisance alarm. Things like swaying vegetation, changing weather conditions, the BXS will also not trigger for small animals or pets. Unfortunately, here in the UK, we aren't blessed with hot conditions very often, but in places with hotter climates, we have accounted for human body temperature being close to the surrounding temperature, making it difficult for other PIRs to detect but not for the Optex PIRs. Our rangers are equipped with an extreme high detection mode for these scenarios. Two models are also available with anti-masking, meaning that should anyone try and cover the sensors up to bypass it, you're going to know about this at the control panel. Another nice feature on the BXS is what we call the blue touch. This is that everything blue on the sensor can be adjusted or is needed for the installation of the product. So for example, the sensitivity and the range, very easy to use. Now, let's head outside to Barry and see how one is installed. Thank you, Matt. And here we are in the front of our building in a perfect little application. As you can see over here, on the left-hand side, we'll have to cover about three to four meters. And on the right-hand side, we can do the full complement of 12 meters. But the first thing we need to do now is measure our height and measure between 0.8 to 1.2 meters in height. So here we've mounted the product. Make sure that you mount it between 0.8 to 1.2 meters. The reference on the detector is at the top of the lens over here and not at the bottom of the detector. That's your reference point to the ground. Then we look over here, we say to ourselves, we need coverage of about three, four meters this side and I need about 12 meters that side. I'm now ready to make my adjustments. So the first thing that we do is we have to unscrew the cover. The screw is underneath of the product. All you simply do is put a screwdriver in, turn it slightly, and the cover will come off. Okay, firstly, we're gonna start with the wiring. First up, 12 volts power supply, positive to positive, negative to negative. Our next terminal, TR, which stands for trouble output that we use for our anti-masking. Then we've got alarm left and alarm right. So what we can do is we can actually decipher it if the alarm has gone off on the left-hand side of the detector or if it's gone off on the right-hand side of the detector. And then lastly, we've got there is tamper. That's if somebody tries to open the cover or to remove the device off the wall. End-of-line resistors, you can put them in manually. So you can do single end-of-line, double end-of-line, or triple end-of-line. Or you get these nifty little gadgets that you can do that has the end-of-line um, already configured in. You just... Uh, speak to our stores and they will give you the right configuration with your built-in end of line resistors from your favorite control panel. Over here we've got sensitivity on the left hand side and the right hand side so we've got low medium high low medium high bearing in mind they can both be independent then we have our dip switch settings going along here just to go through a few the first one is LED on and off nice to reassure when you walk in there little LEDs come on and your detector is working then we've got a uh, Dip switch number four, what that does, that puts individual outputs so I can make that independent to the left or independent to the right. Going down here, we have a little QR code. So if you want to scan the manual, it gives you a nice little automated manual. Look up all your the details or everything that you're trying to find. And then last but least is the distance. It's clearly marked on here um, how you adjust the distance. As you can see, we have a complement of 2.5 meters, then 3.5 meters, 6 meters, 8.5 meters, and 12 meters. So we look at our application here and we say to ourselves, all right, on this side here I need about 3 meters, so I simply just change that to 3.5. This side here I need my full complement, is 12 meters, I can leave this down. My detector is now ready to be closed. 
Now your detector is connected, all we simply need to do now is do a simple walk test. This must be performed in within three minutes of closing the detector's cover. Make sure you perform your walk test in various spots to make sure that you're getting your full complement. Now we will test it with our animals. Now when the animal walks, you'll see there's no detection because it only trips one pyrosense. Here we have fully installed the BXS, and now back to Matt. Thank you very much indeed, Barry, very informative. A BXS, as you can see, can be used in an array of applications, but really where we see this installed is on residential applications uh, for a boundary detector. You also use it on your commercial applications covering the sides of buildings, but a great detector, wired or wire-free, very easy to install, very easy to set up, and more importantly, very robust. It does what it says. So that's a great detector. Thanks again, Barry, and we'll see you all soon.